Hi, so today's question is, how should I start an iPhone repair business at 13, and what parts vendor should I buy from? So, first things first, because I actually did try to start a business when I was very, very young. I was about nine years old and I wanted to move away from my parents and I did not know how. I did not know how to make money. So what I did was I washed bikes as much as I could. I washed bikes. I would clean yards. I would shovel. I did everything I could to make 50 bucks. I figured 50 bucks would allow me to order some mod chips from this guy on IRC if I, and I actually wound up mailing the money in an envelope wrapped in a napkin like a moron and getting them and to get a mail order soldering iron delivered to another guy on the block that lived on the block so that my parents wouldn't know what I was doing. Now what I would suggest is that you do something similar. So the first things first when it comes to what I need to get an iPhone repair business started, you need parts. For this, you need money. If you're an adult and you have a job, this is very, very easy because all you have to do is reach into your bank account or use your credit card, buy parts from a vendor and then go off and start marketing. This is not that easy for you because as, 13, as a 13 year old you start with zero dollars. Also a 13 year old is not allowed to have a credit card which makes it very very hard. Again if I could have just ordered something using a credit card it would have made my life a lot easier. I was not allowed to have a credit card or a bank card until I was 18 years old. When I was younger, I was not limited to what do I want to get based on what I can actually pay for. I was limited to what can I get that my mother, who is a lunatic, will allow me to buy. My mother did not want me to buy anything. It didn't matter how much money I saved. I spent $10 on a shirt. She is going to ask me, why did you spend $10 on a shirt? What a waste of money that is. Why did you spend on a shirt? What do you need this for? Is this really uh, working? For? Like, she would find reason and fault with everything, which is one of the reasons that I tried my best as a nine-year-old to leave. Unfortunately, I failed until I was 17. But point is, you cannot go to your parents and say, hey, I want to buy these parts because at least from my experience, okay, again, I'm coming from the experience of a kid who had a parent who was completely unsupportive of everything that I wanted to do over the course of my life and who told me why everything I would try to do with my life would fail. So what I am coming from is the base of you need your own freedom. And the freedom is going to come from cash. So if you have cash under your bed, you can spend money on parts without having to ask your parents, without having to tell your parents, here's why this is a good business model, here's what I'm trying to do, and listen to them tell you all the reasons why it's going to fail and why you need to study and stay in school and focus on your schoolwork and get a job when you're 16. If you want to avoid all that crap, you need cash. Here's how you're going to get cash. You're going to get cash by finding people who need things done and providing services. Again, finding a job seems really difficult. And in my honest experience, finding a job is really difficult and every time I've tried to find the job, almost every time I've failed. I mean, I was able to get a job, minimum wage job at Model Sporting Goods after about six months of looking. I was able to find a job at 3P Delivery, which I got fired from for taking two sick days with a 102 fever. Um, you know, finding a job is not easy. It really is not easy to get a job. It's very easy to get people to pay you to perform a service that they need done. It's very easy to hustle up your own work, but it's very hard to get an actual job. So what I suggest you do is if you're in a suburban neighborhood or if you live in an apartment complex, knock on every single door and tell people, what can I do for you to get five or ten dollars? Like, what can I do for you to get ten bucks? So what I did is I decided, I noticed that a lot of people in my neighborhood had bikes, so I knocked on every single door. I would actually go into the side of the house and see if they had bikes in the side chained up, and if they had a bike, I'd say, I will wash your bike for a dollar. Truly, I had, I had taken dish soap when my mother fell asleep, so I took her dish soap and I took it outside because, again, I couldn't buy dish soap. I'm a kid. I have no money. I have no resources. And I said, I will wash your bike for a dollar. And I went to everybody's house and did this. Now, you may not have bikes in your neighborhood, so what I would suggest doing is knock on every door and say, what is it that I can do that, I will, that, that will allow me to make 5 or $10? And this may seem weird to you, but you can simply be honest. You can say, hi. I want to start up an iPhone repair business and I have no money. To raise money, I would like to make $5 by helping you with something. So can I clean the floor of your bathroom? Can I clean the inside of your toilet? Do you have heavy boxes that you need lifted? Do you have furniture you need moved that you need me to clean under? Is there any problem with your cable or your VCR? Who am I kidding, VCR? I'm showing my age here. But point is, just ask them if there's anything that, they can, that, that you can do for them where they will give you five bucks. 
Because that, 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 again, there, there has to be something. It's like, I would pay somebody five bucks right now to pick three of these Q-tips off the floor just so I don't have to bend down because I'm tired. You feel me? Somebody out there is willing to give you five or ten bucks for some of your time. You do this enough times, and you build up that three or that four or that five hundred dollars. Now, again, you can't go online. I'm going to assume. Again, I'm only going to assume because if I assume that you don't have supportive parents, it helps and it avoids me from having to make a second video. If you don't have supportive parents, find a local iPhone part supplier. So what I'm going to suggest you do is go online, join these cell phone repair forums. There's a lot of them on Facebook. A lot of them are filled with complete fucking idiots, but there are going to be helpful people on them. And ask, say, I'm in this area. This is where I live. Is there anybody who sells iPhone screens in this area? Anybody at all? I can pay cash and I can meet you. Find somebody who will sell them to you locally and see if you can even bum a few screwdrivers off of them. Because again, I'm assuming no credit card and I'm assuming no help from parents. I'm assuming that you cannot go to Casey Tool Co. or eBay and just buy a screwdriver. See if you can get some of that too. Watch as much on YouTube as you can and learn as much as you can and try to find a friend with a broken phone and tell him I will fix your phone for the cost of the part. All I want to do is, you know, you give me an hour or two with it so I can learn. Here's the thing. Fixing the phone is something that a monkey can do. Any monkey can fix an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 5 with a broken screen. This is not rocket science. Fixing the boards on them is hard. Resetting, uh, like fixing, uh, creating iOS and coding iOS is hard. But taking the old screen off and putting the new one on is something that a monkey can do. It does not require a genius. What requires genius is creating a business model that is sustainable. Actually, I shouldn't say that. It just requires basic common sense, and that's something that so many people no longer have. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the best job possible by everybody you meet. You're going to meet them instead of having them come to you. You're going to be on time or five minutes early. You're going to be kind and courteous. If they have any concerns about your work, you're going to address them. If they go, well, do you have to keep the phone? No. You're going to have parts in stock. If they're concerned about time, say you'll meet them here or there or whatever. If you're con they're concerned about you meeting them at their home, say, we can meet at this Starbucks or we can meet at this restaurant or we can meet at this deli, wherever it is. Ma every, meet every single one of their concerns with a productive and action answer. Don't meet their concerns with paranoia, with distrust, with negativity, with arguing, with blah. Meet their concerns with an honest answer that is going to make them feel comfortable. Leave them with no reason to not feel comfortable using you. One of your concerns may be as a 13-year-old that people are going to trust you less than the store. Let me tell you something. People still have distrust for the store. I've been doing electronics rework for 17 years. I've had this store here for about three years. It's been a retail facility for about three years. I still have people walking in every single day who are paranoid about this, that, and the other. Paranoia is going to come from how people feel about you, how you project your services, where you're located. So I'm in Manhattan in a retail store, so the first thought everybody's going to have is I'm getting ripped off because that's what happens happens in Manhattan at most retail stores. And you need to curb that. You need to be able to make them feel comfortable. And you're going to do that by saying, I can do this up front. You don't pay until it's done. You get this much of a warranty, like this, that, and the other. I can meet you here if you don't want me in your home. I can meet you in this place if you don't want to come to my home. Whatever it is, come up with all the reasons that your average customer comes up with, with why they don't want to use you, and come up with a way beforehand for new clients to just kick all those, nip all those reasons in the butt. And you're going to find that you are legitimate. When a store, if a cell phone store says, I have to order this part, it will take two days, and they have certifications, and a technician with a PhD and beautiful storefronts and everything, and licenses and insurance, they seem less legitimate to the customer than you. If you tell the customer, I can meet you right now and fix it in 10 minutes. Instant service is what creates legitimacy in the eyes of the customer. Then do the best you can for every single customer. Be kind, be courteous, be on time, go above and beyond. If they have other issues, put the extra 5 or 10 or 15 minutes in in the beginning. Again, I don't have the time to do this anymore. I don't have time for courtesy work because I need to be doing and working on everything in these shelves over here. I have over 190 tickets open at any given time. Courtesy work is something I don't have time for anymore, but this is where you're going to come in, and this is where you're going to come in to start kicking my ass, is by offering courtesy service to all these people where I don't have the time to offer that courtesy service. Offer that courtesy service, go above and beyond to help them. Go up and answer questions after you're done fixing their phone about service. And show them how they can save money on service. If they're using AT&T, show them how they can use H2O. If they use T-Mobile, show them how they can use Simple Mobile. Whatever it is you do, show them how to save money, show them how to better enjoy the device, and you know, just, just put the little, a little additive touches in that make you separate from everybody else. Treat them like real human beings, and people will come to you. If you continuously do good work, they'll come to you. Again, don't be the fucking moron like the people on these dumbass cell phone repair forums that are like... Mm, 
that are taking phones to Apple and adding their $100 charges on top, that are buying phones that are fucking stolen, knowing they're stolen, fixing ESNs and selling it to the next guy who's probably going to wind up in jail when you know they find out that, that he has a stolen phone. Don't do this dumbass bullshit, fucked up ass horse crap that is looking at the instant profit right now while ignoring what's going to happen into the future. Focus on the future. Focus on building sustainable relationships. Focus on profit, not just right now. Focus on long term. Focus Focus on making people happy and focus on offering the best service you can while being the most honest and humble person you can. Focus on being somebody that you yourself would actually want to do business with. Focus on being somebody that you would send your grandma to. You should be the kind of technician you would send your uncle, your parents, your sister, your brother, your mother to. And then the profits, I assure you, the profits will naturally come. Make sure everybody around you knows who you are. Don't just tell two friends, I fix phones, and then wonder why you're doing one a month and making no money. Put signs up as everywhere you can. Put ads on Craigslist, Backpage, Kijiji. Put them up at your local school. Ask if there's a way that you can put them up at your local school. Ask if there's a way that you could create a club at your school. I wasn't much into clubs because I personally didn't get along with kids my age and at 26 I still don't get along with people my age it's something that's just probably gonna follow in my whole life but you're probably not like that you're probably a naturally social person you're probably somebody who can actually get along with other people which is something that I again am just not that great at try to create a club at your school again I know you're probably gonna say clubs are lame blah 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 you know what if you feel that way I agree with you. I think a lot of them are lame too, but use it as an advertising tool. Who cares if it's lame if it makes you money? Create a club at your school dedicated to phone repair, to electronics, to learning how cell phones work, and use it as a tool to advertise yourself. Maybe one or two people join. Maybe they tell other people. Maybe now they know that you're the source. You're the nerd that they want to go to. Even if you're not a nerd, you're the nerd they want to go to to get their phone fixed. You're the head of the phone club, and he fixes phones for 20 bucks plus parts or 30 bucks plus parts or whatever it is. And now you have a business. So hopefully Hopefully this gives you some advice, hopefully this works, hopefully you create a, an amazingly successful cell phone repair business, and hopefully by the time you're 17 or 18, you have something that you can actually sustain yourself off of and pay for your own college with, or maybe you have a franchise of stores, or maybe you have 5 or 10 techs working for you, or maybe you have a YouTube channel with 3,000 subscribers that causes people from around the world to send their broken motherboards to you instead of their other local jackass. Who knows? It worked for me. It may work for you. Best of luck. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I will answer them as I can. Ten.